Welcome to Haltech Elite NSP Training Part 6. In this training tutorial, we're going to take a look at our main setup in our NSP software, making sure we have all the basic details configured for the engine configuration that we're trying to program and control with our Elite system. Without further wait, let's jump in so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to be taking a look at how we can work with our main setup configuration in our Haltech NSP software with our elite systems. This is going to be the details you need to make sure are covered in order to make sure that every basic aspect of your engine control from your displacement, number of cylinders, firing order, um, what type of injection strategy you want to go with, your ignition configuration details are all covered so that when we do the startup and get the engine to fire up and run, everything is going to be appropriate and you'll find that you get good results. Otherwise, if these details aren't covered, you're definitely be into trouble. You're not going to have an engine that's going to run, or you could potentially damage something, such as your ignition coils. They could actually be damaged if you have your uh, configuration incorrect. So let's take a look at setting up these basic details. Very first thing we're going to find here is that I am sitting in my vehicle. I am connected to the vehicle, so I'm in the online status. We can find up here our icon is green. This is going to mean we're connected. I am online. If you are offline, so this is red, you can still go through and set up all of your details without being around the vehicle. I am sitting in the vehicle. I am doing all of this with the ignition key on, but the engine not running. So I'm going to key on engine off status. So you don't have to be online. I am online. So I want to make you aware of the status that I'm sitting in the vehicle right now. So what we're going to do is move from, now depending on what tab you have open here, I'm going to move over into the main area. This allows me to go into the navigation tree. We're going to click on our icon right here, and it brings up our navigation tree to start to access some of this information that we need to program. We're specifically going to take a look here at engine configuration tab. We're going to go and use that marker, and we're going to start to expand our tree out. I'm going to go into the engine configuration right here, and this is going to allow me to program some basic details. So first things first, we have our engine capacity. This is the displacement of the engine that we're dealing with. This seems like a very basic parameter that doesn't necessarily matter, but it is incredibly important that you program this accurately to your engine displacement. If we're going through and we're trying to calibrate our volumetric efficiency table, or we're trying to deal with a mass airflow sensor, this is an airflow-based fueling strategy, meaning that we have to have either the VE table representation of the estimation of airflow coming into our engine, or the MAF sensor is gonna be the measurement of the airflow coming into the engine, we can perform the fueling conversion, so airflow to fueling conversion, bringing the fuel into the engine, without having the engine capacity correct to our engine. This is very basic, and a lot of people go in and populate the correct value, but I've seen quite a few tuners go in here and actually skip putting the correct engine capacity that's accurate for our engine. So if you don't get this right, it'll affect your fuel modeling. So everything downstream will be incorrect. So this is one of those basic details we definitely want to program. Now in this case, I'm sitting in my Toyota Super right now and I have this 2JZ uh, GTE engine non-VVTI and this is the accurate engine capacity for the engine. If I rebuild the engine, let's say I did a stroker and I went to a 3.4 liter, I would want to go in here and change that engine capacity to the displacement that it's actually going to be representing for the engine I'm working with. So that is something very, very important. I actually want to break down real quick um, just the details of how the engine capacity is brought into our airflow model, just so you can get an idea of the importance of this. So when we're talking about our fuel and airflow model, we have this underlying equation, and we're going to get into this in other tutorials, but let me just introduce this in this tutorial. We have this equation, fuel mass is equal to air mass divided by target air fuel. That's how our fuel and airflow relationship are going to be tied to each other. We're going to find that the mass of a substance is going to be the volume times the density of the substance. So if we're talking about fuel mass, that would be the density and the volume of the fuel that needs to be brought into the engine to give it proper fueling. The air mass, that's the air mass that's entering the engine, it's being ingested, and that's going to be the volume of the air, also the density of the air. Now, when we're talking about our air mass, and we're talking about something like our speed density, we are going to be, and that's going to be our volumetric efficiency based around a map pressure sensor, not running a mass airflow sensor, we're going to be estimating the amount of airflow coming into our engine from our main volumetric efficiency table. And the reason why this engine capacity is so important because it's part of our airflow estimation, that air mass estimation. 
we're going to find, in fact, that air mass, I'm going to give you the equation here, is going to be our MAP pressure, coming from our MAP manifold pressure sensor, times our volume per cylinder. The volume per cylinder. So that would be the volume that we specify here, the displacement, per the number of cylinders. And it is literally going to be volume per cylinder. So it's going to take this number divided by the number of, number of cylinders you specify. That's volume per cylinder. Then it's going to divide by uh, a universal gas constant, 287. It's going to multiply it by our air temperature, or the density. And then it's going to multiply all of that by our volumetric efficiency percentage, or the cylinder filling representation, from our main VE table. So we need to make sure that the engine capacity is correct because it affects our airflow estimation. If our airflow estimation is incorrect, then our fuel mass is going to be incorrect. That equation won't be correct. It actually won't translate the proper amount of air mass to the elite so it can calculate the proper fuel mass to turn that into an injector pulse width to bring the fuel. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.